the lines between art and infringement often blur. Arguments of free speech and artistic expression often follow, but when do they cross the thin, wavy line? This is the first in a series of album story videos that I'm dubbing Uncovered, where I look at the history and story behind the album art of something within my vast record collection. Today, I set my sights on the censorship of Sister by Sonic Youth, Chapter 1, Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth is a highly influential American rock band that formed in New York City in 1981. The core members included Thurston Moore, Kim Gordon, Lee Ronaldo, and Steve Shelley. Birthed from the New York no-wave scene and known for their experimental approach to music, they blended elements of punk rock, noise rock, and avant-garde to create a distinctive sound characterized by unconventional guitar tunings, feedback, and dissonance. Sonic Youth played a pivotal role in the alternative rock movement of the 1980s and 90s, influencing countless bands and artists. They released numerous critically acclaimed albums, including Daydream Nation from 1988 and Goo from 1990, before disbanding in 2011. Chapter 2. Sister. Released in 1987 on the SST label, Sister is the band's fourth studio album. Well, fifth if you dub their self-titled debut EP as a studio album. It marked a significant step in the band's development, showcasing a more cohesive and melodic approach while retaining their experimental edge. Early Sonic Youth leaned heavily into No Wave and noisy avant-garde, but with Sister, they moved more towards conventional songcraft. Here, Sonic Youth blends noise rock, punk, and alternative with a greater emphasis on song structure and melody compared to the earlier works. Of course, it was still distinctively Sonic Youth, and the band continued to utilize unconventional guitar tunings and feedback to create a dense, textured sound. A key theme on Sister is the influence by science fiction writer Philip K. Dick, with references to his works and personal life, which I went into in my other album story covering this release. Sister represented a pivotal moment in Sonic Youth's career, balancing their avant-garde tendencies with more accessible elements and solidifying their place as pioneers of alternative rock, something they would experience to an even greater degree a year later upon the release of Daydream Nation. It was Sister that paved the way for that album. Chapter 3. Cover Art the cover's eclectic and raw style mirrors the album's musical content. Experimental, personal, and somewhat chaotic. This approach to album art was in line with the band's ethos of blending high art with punk sensibilities. It's an iconic representation of Sonic Youth's artistic vision, combining elements of personal expression, popular culture, and avant-garde aesthetics. It was guitarist and vocalist Thurston Moore who designed the cover art for Sister, with help from the rest of the band. Notable for its collage style, it stirred up a bit of controversy upon its release. I'll get into that soon, but let's dig deeper into the art itself. The collage features a variety of photos, from family pics to eclectic visuals, giving it a DIY punk aesthetic. On the family front, the toddler on the front cover is actually Lee Ronaldo's son, but most of the imagery stems from postcards collected while on tour, circa 85 or 86. To create the piece, Moore laid out everything on an LP-sized sleeve area. The art is a bit mixed media, including photographs and other elements. There are a few fascinating pieces about the art. Let's dig into that. First, you can see a cross in the dead space on both sides of the sleeve. It's not immediately apparent given how visually impactful and colorful the other elements are compared to how understated the crosses are. On one side, the cross is upright, and on the other, it's actually inverted. According to Moore, per his memoir, Sonic Life, elements of the album art portray his warped views of Christianity and some of the hypocrisy that exists within it. This extends into the music as well, most blatantly in song titles like I Got a Catholic Block, Stereo Sanctity, Cotton Crown, and White Cross, in which early versions replace the C in Cotton Crown and Cross with a K. Subsequent versions use the correct spelling, and that's what you find on digital versions 
on platforms like Spotify as well. Next, Sonic Youth is typically depicted as two standalone words, but Sister deviates from this. On one side, it's scripted Sonic-Youth, and on the other, it's written as THE Sonic Youth. Before moving on, it's important to note one interesting trait of the Sister cover art. There is not a real distinction between which one is the front and which one is the back of the cover. They are virtually interchangeable, both including the name of the band and the title of the album. Chapter 4. The Other Girl. Before jumping into the controversy and censorship, one common question that arises is, who is that girl depicted on the cover? And no, not the censored one. There are two young women depicted on the cover of Sister, one on each side. You might think the woman without pants is the one that was censored, but it's actually the girl standing in overhauls that got the black box. The other woman has short crop blonde hair and is laying seductively on the floor with one arm outstretched, wearing just a tight cropped tank top or maybe sports bra, but nothing else. Who is she? The answer to that is actually Audrey Rose, occasionally referred to as Audrey's sister. You can see a full-color rendition of the image on the cover of the 2012 Blu-ray version of the Hardcore Collection by photographer and filmmaker Richard Kern. Of note, in this collection is the presence of Sonic Youth and their songs Death Valley 69 from 1986 and Scooter and Jinx, aka Monkey Love, from 1991. A consistent presence with Kern was the musical stylings of Lydia Lunch, who ran in the same circles of Moore and Sonic Youth during the 1980s and who joins Sonic Youth on Death Valley 69. If you want to learn a little bit more about the maybe seductive underpinnings of the recording of Sister, you can dive into that in my five or so interesting facts about Sister, and I'll include a link in the notes below. Chapter 5, Richard Avedon and in the American West. Richard Avedon was born in New York City on May 15, 1923, and he passed away on October 1, 2004. He was a highly influential American photographer, renowned for his fashion photography and compelling portraiture. Avedon started his career as a photographer for the Merchant Marines during World War II, taking identification photos. He gained prominence as a fashion photographer for Harper's Bazaar and later for Vogue, where his innovative and dynamic style revolutionized the genre. He often captured models in motion, infusing a sense of energy and spontaneity in his work, which contrasted with the static poses typical of fashion photography at the time. One of his most iconic fashion photographs, featuring the model Devima in a Dwar gown, elegantly posed between two elephants at the Cirque de Vire in Paris in 1955. Avedon photographed a wide array of notable figures as well, including Marilyn Monroe, Bob Dylan, Andy Warhol, and the Beatles. His portraits are known for their ability to capture the essence and vulnerability of his subjects. His work extended beyond the realm of fashion and celebrity. He also documented significant cultural and political events. Avedon had a profound influence on photography, leaving a legacy of innovative techniques and a deep understanding of the human condition. In 1985, he completed a series of portraits depicting everyday people from the Western United States. This collection is acclaimed for its raw and unflinching portrayal of its subjects, highlighting Avedon's ability to reveal deep character and emotion. Commissioned by the Ammon Carter Museum in Fort Worth, Texas, you'll find some of the photographs from this collection in the gallery entryway, just past the reception. On a visit to the museum, I actually stumbled across some last year, not making the connection until later. This collection was titled In the American West, and on the cover was a photograph of an unsmiling, freckled girl in overalls. You can see where this is leading, can't you? Chapter 6 the controversy and censorship. That photo, that freckled girl in a white tank top and overalls, appears on the upper left-hand corner on one side of the artwork for Sister. Overlaid with transparent splotches of color, her presence is undeniable. Given that many pieces that found their way onto the cover were pulled from postcards while on tour, it's likely that 
This was grabbed during the band's journey into North Texas in 1985 or 1986, in the year or so after Richard Avedon completed that commission and released in the American West. Avedon became aware of the use of the photograph and threatened to sue both SST and Sonic Youth. Initially, black stickers were placed over the jacket, but it was later blacked out on printings of the sleeve itself on subsequent pressings. The threat from Avedon generated a bit of paranoia at SST surrounding the greater work on Sister, in particular surrounding one other postcard image that was used on the other side of the jacket. SST was worried about the potential threat that Disney would sue the band and label for its use of a sideways image of Disney characters standing in front of the iconic Disney castle. Atop the image is a Fibonacci-style spiral inked in black permanent marker. This, too, would get either a black box placed on top of it in subsequent pressings or a UPC label overlaid atop to obscure the image. There are countless examples of album art that has been controversial, banned, or outright rejected and changed on subsequent pressings. Sister is just one of many examples, and I hope to dig into some other ones in the future, as well as other album art stories that are kind of interesting and fascinating. New album story videos are currently going up every single Sunday right here on the channel. As one person noted many moons ago, this dude is a damn nerd. And you know what? People keep saying that every time they join the Fence Post membership. It's just two bucks a month and you get additional perks and so forth. The more people that I add, the more I'll be adding exclusive members-only content. If you like album stories like this, why not check out the other one from Sister? I'm Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll catch you in the next video.